Okay, I don't know. We're at 90%. Can I be done now? Is this thing ready for its sex party yet? Look, it's all wrapped up. Get the dominatrix. He's ready, man. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Thousand One Games. I'm your host, Gaming J, and today we're hopping into Zenbound 2, the puzzle rope painting game where you rotate around little wooden things and paint them uh, by tying them up in rope. I don't know. It doesn't make a lot of sense. You guys will see what I mean uh, as we get into it. I will say, though, by the way, that the book, the Thousand One Games Let's Play Before You Die book, actually includes Zenbound 1, not Zenbound 2 here. However, Zenbound 1 was only really released on smartphones and stuff, and because this was a digitally distributed game, the company that distributes it has stopped distributing it, and it is therefore now impossible to play Zenbound 1 unless you can track down an Android APK file and you're brave enough to install it on your phone. It could be a virus, who knows? But, uh, but yeah, this is the face of modern gaming that I have uh, complained about in the past. My, I, I really don't like this digital distribution stuff, guys, because for this exact same reason. You know, like, what if back in the day Nintendo had decided that they were done with Super Mario Bros. 1, they were done manufacturing it, and they stopped the distribution of it, and nobody could ever even buy a used copy of it? Like, the game would just be forgotten to time, right? Like, there's value in physical copies of games, or at least... If you, if you digitally distribute a game when you decide that you're done, it should just go straight into the public domain, something like that, you know? Like, it should just be free for everyone. It's like when culture gets lost, you know? And gaming is part of culture. I feel like that's a, a, a loss for all society, so I don't know. There's my, my rant for the day. Um, so we're gonna be playing Zenbound 2 here. Now, I should preface this whole video by telling you guys I am incredibly sleep-deprived. I, uh... I did something real stupid last night. I stayed up till about seven in the morning playing Slay the Spire, which is uh, like a card-based adventure RPG game. It's incredibly addicting. It's a great game. Um, if you guys ever get a chance to check it out, you can. It's an indie game you can find online and for a great price. Um, but yeah, it was one of those 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 moments where it's like it was midnight, and I was like, I really should go to bed. Then 1 a.m. came, then 2 a.m. came, and I was like, okay, well, I'll be in bed by 3, and I'll still get a good amount of sleep. Then 4 a.m. came, then 5 a.m. came, and by the time 5 a.m. came, I'm like, you know what? I'm in it. Like, I'm screwed tomorrow. Like, no matter what I do, I'm going to be sleep deprived. So I was like, whatever. I'll just keep playing, and I played till about 7 in the morning. So, uh... Yeah, I feel horrible today, but uh, what better way to cure a gaming hangover than with more gaming? So today we're going to be checking out uh, Zen Mount 2 here. Also, I picked this game because it's kind of like a laid back, like restful game. Like as you can see here. So here's the, the wooden object that we have to paint. And you might be wondering where I, where the paintbrush is, but you would be a fool for asking that question because here's how you here's how you paint a wooden block uh, bird. If in case you didn't know, you wrap it in rope that's the thing that you do in this game so notice that everywhere the rope is touching the bird um paint is going on the bird bet you guys didn't know this this is how the professionals paint uh <laughs> this is uh yeah this is this is how the professionals do it um they just wrap objects in rope until they look sufficiently painted you can even wrap up his face here Let's just go full BDSM on this thing. You know, some I feel like a nice Japanese couple dropped off, you know, their father's wooden uh, penguin to be painted. And then they come back to pick it up later. And they walk in the store and I'm like, all right, here you go. <laughs> Done. There you go. Here, there you go. Painted for you. Oh, did you want it painted? I thought you wanted it wrapped up in an endless uh, length of nylon rope. Here you go. This is this is old school Japanese painting, guys. You should see you should see them paint a house. You need a lot of rope. But man, man, is it thrilling! All right, so th that's the game basically. Um, there's a few other game mechanics here. Um, you guys can see obviously like this definitely started as a smartphone game. You can see like this is the kind of game you can just easily play on a smartphone. You just uh, you know. Rotate things on a screen and, and it's doing a thing. 
I mean, I guess it's 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 like an interesting physics-based puzzle game that we got going on here. So I don't know. It is what it is, but uh, yeah. I mean, we've had our issues with the Thousand and One book in the past, where it's like, why are they including certain games? <laughs> what? Why? Why did the authors think this was the game to do it? Um, I mean, I personally have never really been been into um, mobile gaming. It's just not really my thing, not my jam. But I feel like the more we get into this book, I'm just saying more and more things are my thing. So it's like maybe what I'm learning is I'm like a gaming bigot or something, you know? Like maybe I've got like deep-seated gaming prejudices. You know, maybe the when you only play Super Mario Brothers and NES, that's like the equivalent of being stuck in like ni the 1930s in terms of like your, uh, you know, your, uh, I'm sleep deprived, so I can't think of the word. But you guys know what I'm trying to say here. Um, to end the level, by the way, you always have to get the rope to that glowing nail. So I'm not able to do it because I can't see. Look, oh my god, look, the nail's right there. Wait. I can't even get to it anymore. I failed the level. Hold on. There we go. Boom! There's your moose, man. 100%. I, I rocked this one. Look at this. There's your moose. We give it back to the kid and we're like, now be very gentle. If any of these ropes should come loose, the paint's just gonna fall right off. I don't think we're actually using paint. Uh, I don't. I don't know what we're using, but uh, yeah, the, the ancient Japanese technique of painting with rope, wrapping random objects in lengths of cord until they are painted for some reason. I mean, these little paint bombs or whatever that are attached to the rope in this level make more sense than just the rope itself coloring these objects. So that's something. But alright. Got our little hippo here. I want to get to like a boss stage. What is it? What, what, what will a boss level look like in this? You know, like something that's trying to paint us. You know, we're trying to paint, you know, a, a, a cute little carving of a monkey. Meanwhile, the monkey's aggressively trying to paint us back. That's what a boss will be in this game. Or maybe it's just a dude with a paintball gun who, like, shoots you in the face while you're trying to wrap things in rope. Yeah, that would be pretty hardcore. And you have to, like, use... And then you have to, like, wrap him up in rope so that he gets painted. And you have to wrap him around the throat so that he not only gets painted, but he suffocates. Chokes on his own... Hoisted by his own petard. That's the phrase I was thinking of. I don't know. Uh, I mean, <laughs> as I say, I'm a little sleep deprived today, so I might not be making a lot of sense. And I might not be at the top of my game, but I kind of figured, like, if any, if I was going to phone it in for any game, you guys would forgive me for this one. Because, like, what are we doing? What are we doing with our lives here, guys? What are we doing here? All right, that's enough. We did a rubber ducky, 100%. Here you go, kid. Don't worry, ma'am. It's not a choking hazard. Give that to your child. He'll love it. All right, we're continuing to climb this tree. Nail bombs number two. Okay, this is like a porcupine or something. Um, all right, let's just... I mean, you don't even have to really be good. Like, here, look, I'm just not even really gonna, like, plan or try this one. I'm just gonna sort of spin quickly until it ends. You know, like, I guess... Look, you're sp I was supposed to get 100% with less than 50 centimeters of rope, and I did it. There you go. I wasn't even really trying on that one. Kind of like, you know what this is kind of reminding me of? Star Trek The Next Generation. There's an episode where Riker goes to this alien planet. I think he goes to Ryza. And he comes back with that game. It's like goggles that they put on. And it has like big tubes that suck in discs. And the game basically plays itself. You don't even really have to do anything. Um, but the, the secret of the game is it's, a, it's actually like hypnotizing the crew. And, uh, you know, the, there's a plot to take over the Enterprise. You know, spoilers. But, uh, but the game itself is just this, like, really basic game that, like, everyone is just, like, addicted to playing and stuff. And, frankly, I mean, that almost defines mobile gaming, in my opinion. Like, you know, people get got really into, like, Candy Crush and Cut the Rope and, like, I don't know, whatever other, you know, mobile games there, that have there have been over the years. I don't even really can't even really think of them off the top of my head because again i'm not a I'm not a mobile gamer um but like this game is like the epitome of mobile gaming where it's like it's kind of interesting and pretty 
And like, this is way more advanced in some ways than anything you ever could have put on the Super Nintendo or Sega Genesis back in the day. But give me a Sega Genesis or Nintendo game any day of the week over this. I mean, like, it's... I, I guess it's just a game that's for a different genre of person than me. Wait, did I not pass the level? I don't understand. Uh, okay, I'm supposed to get two stars or something like that. I don't know. Whatever, let's continue wrapping this dude up. Maybe I do have to plan out my moves or something. How pathetic is that? <laughs> that I'm bad at a game like this. You know what, I... If I am bad at this game, I don't care. It's hard to care when you're not very good at uh, Zenbound. I don't know. But yeah, like, I wouldn't even call this a video game per se. This is more in the category of, like, like gaming art. Um, and we've encountered some stuff in the book um, over the years that I would say really is more gaming art than video game. Um, and I, you know, I definitely, I do appreciate that the book is, like, trying to break the mold and trying to, like, uh, you know, do some new stuff. Not just including, you know, all the Super Mario Brother games and stuff like that. But at the same time, I don't know. Like, is this a game that you have to play before you die? I can't get up to 85% uh, by the way. This is kind of annoying. Uh, let's restart this. I think I gotta like go into the arms a little bit, like get into these armpits. Oh, I actually have to try it this game. That is, that is sad. All right, see, like you got, here's the trick. You got to wrap it around this monkey's arms or whatever the hell this is. I, I don't know what this is. This is like a depressed human. It was carved into wood for posterity. There we go. Boom, look, we wrapped it all the way around his arms. Now, I guess we'll go around the legs a little bit. We go like up his butt. Oh, no, we can't, but we can kind of go up his legs a bit. Okay, maybe that's good. And then we'll kind of get in here. Right, I guess I guess there is more of a of an art to this ancient Japanese painting style than I thought. But is it like I, I joke, but like has anyone ever actually painted something by tying a rope around it? This can't be real, right? I'm probably offending like a, an entire uh, continent of Japanese people right now. They're like, my father painted with ropes in samurai times. You, sir, are an ignorant North American. I don't know why the Japanese people speak with a British accent, but they do. The accent got a little weird at the end there, but I don't know. Like, maybe, maybe I'm, am I the asshole? Maybe I'm the asshole here. Who knows? Maybe. Okay, hold on. We got to, like, rotate this. Oh, God, that rope just does not want to stay on his hand. Okay, whatever. We've done enough, uh, enough stuff there. Go in here and kind of get his legs. There we go. You guys thought I was just gonna phone it in the whole time, eh? Joke's on you, I'm really getting into this game. So much so that I'm gonna help kickstart Zenbound 3 on the PS5, man. Play this thing in VR. How uh, it was always intended to be played. I cannot crack 85. How do you get 85% on this thing? What part of him do you want painted? <laughs> also, what a crappy paint job. Like, honestly, if you did take some, like, forget about the rope. But if you did take in, like, a little figurine or something to be painted, and it came back, and it was painted... Like, look, look at all the spots that I'm missing that aren't painted at all. If, if that was what you got when you took something in to be painted, you would be... You would be offended. You'd be like, the, those painters, don't pay those guys. Don't That Gaming J guy, don't pay him. Don't pay him a dime. He did not do his job. Okay, I don't know. We're at 90%. Can I be done now? Is this thing, thing ready for its sex party yet? Look, it's all wrapped up. Get the dominatrix. He's ready, man. He's ready. All right, off to the next. Okay, good. We only have to get two out of three stars. Oh, look! <laughs> it is a sex party! They're like Kama Sutra poses! Preparation. Yeah, it looks like he's getting prepared for something, if you know what I mean. Oh, yeah. 
You know what he's getting ready for. He's getting ready for that other guy to come over. The guy we just finished binding up. Maybe this game is, like, really big in... Like, again, I'm joking, but maybe it's, like, you know, within the S&M community, they're like, oh, my God, have you played Zenbound? It's, like, so hot. They're, like, playing a game like this, like, oh, my God. It's, like, the equivalent of reading uh, Fifty Shades of Grey on the bus, you know? Like, you feel so dirty when you're doing it. Um, I mean, I never read Fifty Shades of Grey. I'm talking about, like, the whole joke about how, like moms and stuff were like reading it on the bus and it's basically like you know softcore stuff um uh but yeah yeah i i can proudly say i've never read 50 shades of gray never watched any of the movies never seen twilight never read twilight it's a point of pride for me again maybe i'm just a prejudiced old man <laughs> but uh that's that's one that i i'm willing to i'm willing to to stake a claim in the ground and say that one, that one's not for me. That one's not for me. It wasn't written for me. I don't like the materials. I don't think they're particularly interesting or good. So, I mean, I guess that's a lot to say without ever having seen. Maybe Twilight would be like the romance story of my lifetime. Maybe like if, like here I am like talking like big man talk about like Twilight sucks. Cut to, you know, like me actually watching it with like a box of Kleenex in my lap, like, you know, tears running down my face, like, no, Edward. Or whatever, Jacob. Who's the one that everyone likes? I think Edward's the vampire, right? And he's a good guy or something? I don't know. There's also a werewolf. Um, you know, you think vampires, werewolves, why wouldn't a dude like that? But, uh, yeah, I don't know. Anyway. Bound this guy up for his party. Boom! And then after you bind them up, you can sort of like take a look at your handiwork and you can say, ah, yes. I like what I did here. I like what I did here. This sort of was a mess, but uh, I recovered it. You know, you can sort of admire what you've done. I like what you've done with him. We just go to the top. We just cut to the chase. What is this? No control. Oh, I read that as no control. Oh my god. These are Kama Sutra poses. What is this game? <laughs> oh my god. You know, I like to think about all the parents in the 80s who were like, video games are corrupting the youth, man. You know, like the people who were like, against Mortal Kombat and Night Trap, who you know, like, you know, thought that people who played Doom were going to become mass murderers and stuff. I... Would like to to find some of I would like to I would like a DeLorean so I could go back in time, take some of those parents and bring them to my basement right now and show them this game. And be like, this is what we play in the future. Believe it or not. And all the things you were worried about, almost like the opposite came true. Of course it's not fully accurate to tell them this is all we play, this is just, you know most casual of casual games we do play games more violent than doom i mean if we showed them the violent games they would go nuts but the point of having a time machine is to mess with the timeline so i would i would tell them i would be like you know violent video games those don't exist anymore this, this is what people are into now people like um you know having sort of wooden sex pose dolls and binding them in rope that's that's what the kids are into I'm sure they would not be happy with that either. I'm sure they would uh, be similarly upset. They'd be like, sex poses? My kids can't know about sex. Uh, can you tell I'm sleep deprived? Like, what am I even talking about here? I feel like my brain is struggling to like come up with regular conversation. What am I talking about? Time traveling, the trick people in the 80s, and... I'm a sutra stuff. I don't even know. I don't even know, man. All I know is this guy wants to be blue. And we're gonna help him hat. We're gonna help make it a reality. This guy's gonna be so wrapped up. He's gonna be he's gonna be pooping blue when we're done with him. Look at this. And we're only at 52%. Okay. Hopefully. So I guess so the strategy of this game as much as I can figure it out, is that like as you place rope, you kind of make it harder to place other rope 
in that area. So it's like you kind of have, you do have to kind of come at the statue strategically and think like, where do I want the rope? Where is it going to interfere? Like, look, we can't really get at his his genitals here because there's too many ropes. And it's like the angle of the rope. We can't really get in there. So those are nice and protected from the blue paint. I don't want them to be protected from the blue plate uh, paint because I would like to paint them. I would like to paint his, his balls so badly, but I can't get in there. I can't get in there and get at them. So it's a little frustrating. Don't you hate it when uh, you hire someone to paint you head to toe and they just really can't get into every nook and cranny that you've paid them for? It kind of feels like, what am I paying them for at all? Why even pay them to paint me if, you know, this is the this is the quality of work that they're going to do? Um, so, yeah, yeah, this guy's probably not very happy with what he's getting from me. Um, but, you know what? Uh, he He's getting what he's getting. Just end this off. There we go. All right. Hide him up nice and good. There we go. He's not going anywhere. I guess my mind immediately went dirty with the rope tying, but like maybe we're maybe this is like kidnap victim or, or like kidnapper preparation school. You know, like maybe what what this game is really about is how do you tie up your victims so that they can't escape from your creepy basement? You know, like how how do you get people bound up so intensely that they're just screwed? Um just look at this. Like if you if you actually tied a person up to the degree that I'm tying this dude up, like there's no way they'd be going anywhere. Like they would be your prisoner. You could have your way with them and like I mean I guess I just immediately went dirty again. I don't know. Why why is sleep deprived Jay such a weirdo? I don't know. I'm using it as my excuse today, guys. I would never normally talk about this stuff. I'm just so tired, I have no filter. No filter! None at all. Um, I feel like we're rocking this one, though. Oh my god. I can't believe I'm getting into this game. Guys, save me. Somebody e mail me some retro games so that I can, like, cleanse my palate after this. There we go. Look at this. Wrap this guy up so tight. Now let's kind of get in. Here. No, we kind of want to. Uh... It is. It is actually very easy to um, sort of direct the rope and stuff. Sometimes I find rotating things in 3D things can be a little tricky, but they actually did do a good job of this one. You know, like we can make fun of it and joke about it and stuff, but it doesn't mean that I think it's like total crap or anything like that. I think sometimes people don't fully appreciate that. Like when I play a game, you know, it might be a game they really enjoy and I might be struggling with it. I'm like cracking jokes and stuff. And so occasionally people have gotten offended and like, you don't understand boxing, man. It's way better than you think. And I'm like, yeah, man, it might be a good game. I'm just not very good at it. Uh, but here we go, oh, man. We got this guy. I, like I, I could easily just end this, but I like really want to give this guy a good tying up. I really want this guy to get his money's worth. We're so close to 100% too. I'm like kind of tempted to try. I don't think I can get it though. Okay, let's bind his hands so that he can't escape from the, uh, the basement that we've got him tied up in and then we'll call it a day. 95%. How are you supposed to get 100%? Imagine painting one of these things, whatever they are, these um, wooden people with uh with just rope and getting a hundred percent of it painted i can't even paint a room with a paintbrush like look at this i painted this guy with rope be impressed guys be impressed all right we'll do one more of these because they're all kind of the same i think and i'm sure it gets more calm what is this oh, i thought it was like a thing i thought this was like an eye and this was the guy's nose, like a gonzo nose and mouth. But I think it's a dude. Here's his head. Here's his arms. Here's his legs that he's wrapping up behind him. This one's called ability. Okay, let's do it. Play. Wait, can I not play this one? Play. There we go. Oh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> 
Okay, so we can conclude that these are Kama Sutra-ish poses. This is 100% the Fifty Shades of Grey of video games. Somebody's mom played this on a bus and it made her feel sassy and she felt embarrassed. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. Oh my god. Alright, well Zenbound here is one of the games of the book a thousand- Oh, sorry, Zenbound 2. One of the games of the book a thousand one video games. It's the game of the ancient Japanese art of binding people so as to paint them. I don't know. That's about the most accurate description you can come up with for the game. Um, it's an interesting game. You know, I will, I, despite all the jokes, all the ragging on this game here today, I will say, actually, it is, it grew on me in its, in its uniqueness, and um, there are some interesting elements to it. You know, if you had an iPhone back in the day and you were looking for a game to play casually on it, uh, is this a game you could have played? Sure, actually. Uh, absolutely. Um, does this mean that this is a game that you must play before you die? Absolutely not. <laughs> um, I'm definitively saying that I, I don't think this one should be in the book. I, I don't get it. Maybe, uh, you know, I mean, I w I've never been an iPhone user. I'm an Android guy. But maybe iPhone viewers out there are going to be like, no, no, Jay, you don't understand. Like, this game was, like, huge on the iPhone. It was the iPhone's Tetris, you know. And so maybe, I, maybe I'm wrong. If I'm wrong, you let me know in the comments down below. But... You know, for for all for all the classic games out there that the book didn't include, I don't I don't think this one needed to be in here. In fact, I'm going to go even more controversial. I'm going to say I don't think a single mobile game should have been in that thousand and one book. Um, I mean, I think that's totally a matter of opinion. And the the counter argument, the immediate counter argument I can think of is, you know, Jay. Like it or not, mobile gaming is a big part of gaming history. Mobile games do need to be in that book, you know? Like, if this is a thousand video games of our lifetime, um, there are at least a couple of mobile games that should be in there. And you know what? From that argument, from that perspective, I could say, okay, maybe things like Candy Crush and, like, a couple others should be in the book. But I think... I mean, maybe, maybe again, I'm just showing my own bias. Like I was going to say, I don't think mobile games should really have a big part of the book, but you know, who am I to say? I don't know. Who am I to say? Maybe there's mo more mobile gamers, more casual gamers out there than hardcore gamers. And a true book representing a thousand one video games you must play before you die should actually have a ton of mobile games. I don't know. I don't know what the answer is, guys. I would love to know your thoughts and opinions on this. Um, so if you don't mind, sound off in the comments down below. Let me know, what do you, have you guys ever even heard of this game or played it? And whether you have or you haven't, what do you think of this game? Like, first of all, how bizarre is it that you're painting by tying people up? Um, but that point aside, like, what do you think of the argument? Should mobile games be in a book called A Thousand One Video Games Must Play Before You Die? Or should that book focus on the more serious, non-casual games of gaming history? You know, because there's, there's tons of ground to cover in terms of games that are iconic and also like hidden gems and personal favorites and all that. But like, you know, do we have enough room to even include any mobile games? Or should it all just be non-mobile games? Um, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Um, as always, whatever you think of my ramblings, whatever you think of my opinions and my uh, inappropriate comments here today, I hope today was semi-entertaining and enjoyable for you. Again, I am super sleep-deprived. I'm actually going to go have a nap after this, but I wanted to get one game in today, and so I went for something super casual and weird and Japanese, and I, I got all three. Um... So yeah, I hope you guys did have some fun today. If you did, don't, don't forget to like the video and all that junk. And other than that, I will catch you guys uh, in the next one. So until then, my friends, you all take care of yourselves. And uh, you can just imagine this is me being tied up in a web of my own lies until we meet again. I don't know why I'm lying, but there you go. Uh, anyway, guys, until next time, I'll just be here bound up in a weird pose. <laughs> Peace. Oh, God, I need sleep. Give me poopin' blue when we're done with them. <laughs>